We saw in the previous video how you can start adding uh, your own materials one at a time manually in here. You can also edit and delete them, so you can manage them listing right here. But here we want to look at the importing from a file. In many cases you might get a dump from your ERP system, or you may have another secondary source for the bill of material for any particular process. So instead of entering them manually here, we're going to import from a file here. Now just one thing, when you do the add here, you'll see that it comes up with a specific requirements, part description, part number, the quantity, unit of measure, unit cost. These are the information we're going to do if we add a particular part here. And uh, what we've got down here is we have an Excel sheet. And this has the information we're looking for here. And this is actually, to give credit, this is a company called uh, Arena Solutions. And they've got a website that talks about building materials and so forth. To give you an example, you can download this example if you wish from the Arena Solution sites here as well. And the part of that, you see there's a number of different sheets that are telling you a lot of information about bills and materials, giving you blank templates and so forth, which are all very useful, so I'd highly recommend this. And they have an example here of a bill of material here. And what we're going to do is we're going to import this data. But you can see they've got a lot of information on here that we may or may not use. In fact, that we can't use all this. We don't have all these fields for a different phase of production and so forth. There are certain fields that we are looking for. So coming back to our process here, in general when we're doing any kind of display, our sequence is going to be quantity, description, the part number, the unit of measure, and the unit cost. Now if you imagine these as references, the quantity would be our number one field, the description would be number two, the part number number three, the unit of measure number four, and the unit cost would be number five here. And what we've done is we've gone back to our data source. So we're in the example bill of material sheet on the first row, we have a quantity. And what we've done is we've added a parenthesis one anywhere in that particular cell there. And that's going to tell our program that that's a quantity. The second thing we had was the part name. And they call it part name, we call it part description in our input. So I'm just going to put a two in there, a parenthesis two. The part number is number three. The unit of measure was over here, it's number four. And in their case, they actually didn't have a price. In many cases, you may not have the price in the dump. I just added a column anywhere in my Excel sheet, and I call it manually added five. And you can see there's no price in here. So there's no price uh, available to me in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to import the data from this sheet right into our demo example here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to our process. I'm going to click on the import from file, and I'm going to go and find that particular Excel sheet. Okay, the Excel sheet is this bill of material. It's the XLSM, the macro-enabled one. I click on it and I click on open. It's going to present all of the sheets that were in the Excel sheet because obviously you might have a, a selection of sheets and you want to pick the right one here. So if I go back to my Excel sheet here, you can see my first sheet is about arena, then explanation, then BOM, revision table, example BOM, and example revision table. So if I come back over here, you can see these same ones are prompted here. And now obviously you want to pick the right one, but you pick the wrong one, like the revision table, click on the OK, you'll actually get a message saying that it's missing the information in the parentheses. So that's not the one we're looking for. So we're going to do it, search for it again. And this time I'm going to pick the same one, and I'm going to pick the correct one, the example BOM. I click on the OK, give it a couple of seconds, and there's all the information that was listed in the external source has now been imported right here. So I can use that as a source for the parts to complete the process. Now notice if I go back to my example where I've already got all of my materials defined according to where they occur in the process, there's an option up here that says view the source BOM. So if I click on that, it instantly brings it up here. You can see here the fields quantity, parentheses one, part description, parentheses 2, part number, parentheses 3, a unit of measure 4, unit cost 5. And if I export this out to Excel, you'll see that it even dumps that out into the Excel sheet for us. You can see it right here, right? Quantity 1, part description 2, and so forth. This is so you could actually export a bill of material, you can make changes to it, and then you can import it back in. We've, we've already got this particular format pre-populated with the correct numbers in here. Now the reason why we use numbers and not text is that many of our clients, of course, are not using English. Uh, so if it's in Chinese, for instance, they could still use the parentheses 1, parentheses 2, and use the Chinese characters or German characters or whatever. So no matter where you are, you should be able to use this format to get your data into the bill of material in Timer Pro.